Hey, coaches and athletes, welcome back. Michael Hughes here, CEO and founder of Jamal's EDU. A few of you have reached out and said, Michael, it'd really be cool if you give us some what, some techniques behind the understanding and the why. So I'm gonna give you five different exercises that could potentially help relieve your sciatic pain. Now, our job is to coach coaches on how to take all this information for their clients. But we're learning that a lot of of consumers, a lot of athletes out there are also looking for the same information. So we're going to dive in and understand the what behind the why that we previously made in a video that I recommend you watching first right up here. That's on how we think about static pain. It's pretty cool that I can point to a, an upper space in a corner of a screen and technology connects uh, other videos. Love this stuff. So we're going to go into the what today. Before we dive into that, please make sure to subscribe to our channel to show your support and to continue to give our videos a push out to the ether and so how we approach, problem solve, fix the root causes of movement related pains and anything other related in the fitness industry. Now, I also like to note, this is a bit of a disclaimer, that the exercises that I'm going to be going over today are not guaranteed to help your sciatica. I really wish that the protocol way of thinking worked, but it, it doesn't. So. I'm going to mention a few root causes of where sciatic could be coming from in this video. And so if those exercises do help, awesome. If they don't help, it's not because it can't be helped. It's because I didn't go after the right root cause. So there's going to be a link in the description below that you can actually reach out to our team who actually does virtual training as well if you want to dive into the deeper understanding of why sciatic is in your body and, wor and working through yourself. All right, let's jump to it. Exercise number one, or the first possibility of what would be causing the pain in your sciatica. Remember, general sense here, it's not your sciatic pain that's the problem. That's just a cause of what's going on. I want us to really dive in and really think about that one, right? Don't just start rolling on your piriformis thinking that that's going to fix everything. It could, but it's not the likelihood of it all, because that's being pissed off by something else in your body muscle, bone, joint. Think about that, right? Muscle, bone, bone, joint. So another thing, I have to go to exercise number one. I'm going to follow a certain strategy on how to go after this to make it very simple and succinct so you can follow along in the process. And I'm going to go after soft tissue first. Then I'm going to go out basically massage in an area first. Then I'm going to go after stretching that area. Then in that stretch or apart from that stretch, we'll do some basic exercises or drills. So it's a certain strategy that I'm following. There are other strategies, but again, for a video, we kind of have to point uh, a line and follow it. So let's consider that for the first case, first exercise is that your hip flexor is the problem. Now how we figure that out, it's a different story. But let's say your hip flexors are not causing enough or allowing enough extension through your hips. So therefore, just follow me in this process. The sciatica gets pissed off because the piriformis is shoving in on itself. That's the reason why. So from this process of thinking, grab onto a foam roller, a foam ball. I think a foam ball is a better option because this hip flexor is tucked with inside of the pelvis. So that's a way to think about it. So boom, lay on the ground, put that ball literally on the hip flexor. I'm going to where the bony aspect of the hip is. So if you're looking at, at this model, zoom in right here, boom. I'm going just inside of that, that bone. Awesome there. Cool. Thank you, editing team. Back into it. So now, here we go. I'm on that zone, and I'm pushing into that muscle. Again, about a 6 out of 10 in terms of discomfort. It's uncomfortable, but I can take it, I can, and I can manage it. I'm just going to breathe through it and push until that sensation of tenderness drops really low, like a two, and then dive deeper and keep that cycle going. It's a good time to pause this video if you're following along and do this for about two to five minutes and then switch sides. Let's train both sides. Even though you have pain on one side, make sure to do the other side to make sure it doesn't come up on that side as well as a general strategy. Cool. All right. See you later. If, you haven't, if you're still sticking around, let's go to the how we're going to stretch this, this thing. So. We have a lot of these stretching cages around, and we have one in our video because we use them all the time in our facility right outside the doors there because they make creating an environment of functional patterning very easy, very easy, and very step, step one. A lot of you don't, don't have it. So, but one of the most popular videos is actually how to use this, this thing. So I'm going to show you in here and then also out of here, but I'm going to do this one really quickly. If you do have a cage and you want to stretch out that hip flexor, 
You want to toe in on that base foot. Let's say it's your right side. Left foot, you want to come up on the secondary platform right here. Hands are in a comfortable spot. From here, you can't really see because I'm turned away from you, but you really want to lift through the rib cage. This is also true for not using the cage. And drive your foot into the ground. We, we, we call that creating active tension within the body where you separate this, this is the area that you want to open up. Once you've done that, hold it. Still keep breathing though. Then from there, you want to go as far forward in a hip shift that you can to create a sensation of stretching, even if it's super light, but there's very little discomfort in the hip or in the back sciatic area. Some people like to go zero pain, depending on the situation, I would say yes or no, but a very little discomfort, as close to zero as, as, as possible, and find that zone of how far you want, want to go. If you have a lot of discomfort, back off a little bit. Even if you don't feel much of a stretch, zero or very close to zero discomfort is ideal. Then once you're there, so I'm going to drive forward, boom. Once you're there, then you're going to drive your pelvis side to side and or in a rotational pattern. So what you're doing is you're creating more space left to right in the hip joint, in that muscle, and more space rotationally in the hip joint or in that muscle. And I want you to do that for about a dozen plus, maybe even two dozen times. Again, this should be relatively low discomfort in that zone or zero discomfort in that painful zone, right or left side, depending if it's your left foot or left side, you want to put your left foot down and do the exact same thing. Your key is to create space and use repetition to do that more and more and more. If you don't have a cage, what you're gonna do, you're gonna scrab onto a wall, grab onto a stick, grab onto anything, mope stick, again, back of a chair, do the same thing. Push your foot through the ground. I'm toed in just a little bit. That's gonna create great lengthening or stretching in that hip flexor. That's a possible cause. Drive forward and to the point where you feel a good stretch. And then from there, my hips are going towards you and away from you. They're going side to side and they're also rotating. Again, you're going to do both independently and continue to find more space. And once you go as far as you can in either one, feel free to progress forward even more. And I bet that, that pain back here that you, that you did have this far forward is now decreased, if not gone. You keep playing that game more and more and more. We're going after a strategy that this anterior hip, hip flexor area, is too bound down. It's just too, too tight. And it's not allowing enough path of travel. So it's making this muscle zoom and just get beat up. Okay, that's exercise number one. Exercise number two, we're going to take the strategy, again, from a soft tissue to a stretching to a slight movement, that the adductor on the same side, so if there's pain on the right side, right inside thigh, pain on the left side, left inside thigh, is basically too bound down just like the hip flexor was. So what are we going to do? We're going to grab onto a soft tissue tool, again, whatever you want to use. We like to use this trigger point ball. There's any tool works. Start at the knee, start to progress in kind of a zigzag pattern to find where the densest, most uncomfortable part of that, of that uh, inside thigh is. You may find it's in several spots, you want to knock them all down. So typically it's a, bit, a little bit higher in, in the hip or towards the hip joint, the ball's right here. May not be closer towards the knee, just in my experience. Same thing as before, exercise one, two to five minutes, an uncomfortable, comfortable soft tissue pressure, and let it just sizzle down. And if it gets kind of to a point where you don't feel anymore, dive in deeper. Complete that cycle, two to five minutes. Breathe, relax, enjoy yourself. We have plenty of other videos on how to foam roll that you can check out as well. Cool, go after that one. Again, switch sides, do both sides. Because you have two legs that work in connection with each other, one leg can actually affect the other leg that's in pain, even though the leg that's the problem is not in pain. So just a way to consider that. All right, for those of you who have a stretching cage, you have a few ways to go after this hip flexor or this inside thigh stretch. The easiest one, but maybe not the most effective, is throw that affected leg up on the second platform. You can see it there, coming down, hands in front. I'm gonna tilt into the cage, and then you're gonna feel that stretch on the inside thigh here. Hips are going to go forward and backwards and rotational. Again, we do not want to create any sort of discomfort in the sciatic side um, in, in the back. So do your very best to make that as small as possible. Another way to do that is instead of putting the affected side up, you can keep the affected side down 
and put the other side up. And you can drive your knee in and tilt out of the cage. That should stretch predominantly this down leg side. You may still feel some stretch in the up leg side, but the down leg side, hips gonna go forward and backwards. Hips gonna rotate. How many reps? A lot, 12, 20, 30, right? Be in that spot where you're stretching and moving and just start to open up that, that space. Okay, come on out of there. Another and third way to do it is right foot, if, if my right side's affected, right side foot wide, left foot in a staggered stance. My right foot's on the ground, my left foot's on the, second, on the first platform, sloping down, hands in. I'm gonna get my body super tall, drive forward until I feel a stretch in my inside thigh, right through here. And then I'm gonna go, I sense gonna go forward and backwards with that stretch, as pain-free as I can. I can go side to side on that stretch, as pain-free as I can and I can rotate my pelvis, not allowing my feet to slide out on that same spot. Now again, for those who don't have a cage, you pretty much do the exact same thing that I just said. You just wanna grab onto something to make your, your body feel stable. So through that stability, if I wanna grab onto a stick, a mope stick, or a ball, or a ch back of a chair, a couch, I'm gonna go, essentially, I can go slide in, which affects this side here. Hips move forward and backwards. Hips rotate. Right, I want to open through that space. I can throw my foot onto something, right? Say I have a chair around you or, or a coffee table. I can throw my foot up onto that spot, tilt into the spot that stretches my upside or my affected side. And then I can go super wide stride stance. Left foot's in front of my right by about a foot or so. Then I want to go into my slide over to here, tilt into my leg. I can drive forward and back and I can drive rotationally. Again. There's subtleties and nuances to your body's positioning to make this stretch good to great. So if you can't dial that in, just know that there's a lot of body and movement awareness that comes with these types of stretches that go after root causes versus just effects. So take your time. Know that your, your movement is a movement practice. This is not something your body just does. Don't just jump on a trampoline and start doing backflips the moment you start jumping on a trampoline, right? There's a movement awareness you have to build up and a skill set. So welcome to this journey. It's not something to be frustrated about. It's something to be excited about as you start to progress and progress and progress. So a little side note before I jump to exercise number three, which is going after the quadriceps, especially the one right down the middle. Quads, there's four of them. Two live on the outside and two are stacked right on top of each other right down, down the middle. So just like the hip flexor, we're thinking the quad or one of those quad muscles can basically say, no, nah, I'm going to limit that hip flexion, that hip ability to go forward and cause pain back here. So same strategy that we're going to follow. Put that foam roller, foam ball right directly, right above your kneecap, right down the center of your thigh, your quad, and just start rolling all the way up to your hip where you've previously foam rolled before, but staying on the thigh. Then go after the meatiest, baddest, most tender spots in the same way that we talked about before. S uncomfortably comfortable, two to five minutes, keep sinking in deeper as your body and your soft tissue allows you to do that, muscles basically. And do both sides. From there, if you have a cage, we like to grab onto a little knee, knee pad because we can get ourselves in an upright position for a lot of our a lot of our older athletes who can, don't like to go on the floor, but my knee's pushing down into the pad, and my hip flexor, sorry, my rib cage is lifting up, creating that active tension, whoo, boom, across. Hands are held, hold on for ultimate stability. I'm gonna drive my opposite knee forward. That creates a lot of tension here. Now my foot is actually down and just up this ramp. If I wanna go crazier, I can throw my foot way up top here. You see I get a lot more knee flexion. There's another way of doing it. That's not the best, best way, but I can put my knee down on here, my foot on the second platform. So knee on the base platform, foot on the second platform, and then do the same thing if you want a lot more. But that's just an, an option. As I go forward, hips slide left and right. Hips rotate within that stretch. I wanna go as far forward as I can but not go too far where I create too much discomfort in the back. To me, like a three out of 10. Again, dozen plus or so, rotate left and right. Again, if you're following along, rewind and just, just pause the video. What have you got to do to kind of stay on, on track as I progress you through these things a little bit faster as I go through each exercise because you start to get the picture that the strategy I'm following 
is repeatable. It's a system. Then I ro rotate through, boom, 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 boom. Okay, column out of that. If you don't have a cage, you're gonna grab something soft to kneel down on. Again, strategy is the same. Grab on something to make yourself feel stable and comfortable in this stretching sequence, this dynamic stretching. In a sense, drive through the knee, pull up through the rib cage. So you try to create that, that, that same sensation of tension or gravity and ground reaction forces on your body. Drive forward, a lot, lot of physics there, sorry. Hips go side to side, hips rotate. See how my foot's on a toe here? If I want to release, it's too tight, I can go off my toe. That creates a little less tension. On toe, more tension. Again, your whole body works together as a tension network. It's pretty awesome. If I want more, I can put my foot up on, onto something behind me. If you have a little stair in your house, same exact process. Again, I'm only doing one side, feel free to do both sides. All right, now what are we gonna do next? Exercise number four. What if your calves are now playing the picture? Well, how can the calves play the picture quickly? Well, as you're walking and pushing, right, your hip has to extend, hip flexor, your quad, but also so does your ankle. Your ankle has to go through what's called dorsiflexion. It's actually a lot of bending. So if the calf is too bound down, it now limits what these two muscles that we just, uh, these three muscles that we just, just covered. So your calf can be too tight or your soft tissue there. So how do you go after that one? Grab a seat on the ground, put your back against something for ultimate comfort, put your leg on a foam roller foam ball for this strategy, search around the whole muscle, literally all the way down to the Achilles tendon too. Don't have to go on the tendon, but all the way down to it. Search that whole zone out. If you feel that there's nothing there, take your other foot and stack it on top of that to add more weight and more pressure to the exact same process. And if you didn't find something, I bet you just did. Your, your, your tissue just needs to go deeper and your leg didn't weigh enough to apply that particular pressure. So same thing, chill out, make sure you're very comfortable, make sure you're leaning against something for ultimate comfort so your wrists don't get tired, follow the exact same process. And that process is, it is again, push to comfortable, uncomfortable. I am now a repeating record, two to five minutes, let your body accept it. But again, it has to be repeated because we forget this all the time. We push as hard as possible, thinking the body will respond with the most amount of intensity the fastest, and that's just not how the body works. I wish it did, that'd be awesome, but it, it simply doesn't. <sighs> Breathe, relax, go, th go, go through the process. Okay, to stretch it out, if you have a yoga block at home or a real thick encyclopedia that you no longer use because it's out, outdated, right? There it is off a of black background, there it is. You can use that. If you have a cage, put your foot up on the first little platform, put yourself into dorsiflexion, now this is only set for one level, so you maybe go beyond the person's limit too quickly because that's a set height. So do note that you may have to change heights. Um, and we put a little like, kind of like towel underneath there or something to kind of change the level so we don't go directly on it, but I do go just off of it. Again, use the tools that are around you for, for that. So put a foot, foot on there. Because it's, when the f because it's when the calf is behind me, I put my other leg in front of me, so it automatically puts me to the right position or pattern for the, for, for the stretch. I then drive the body forward into that calf stretch. I go side to side, you see a pattern here. I'm using different movements to create uh, stretch, stretch capacity in those muscles. I rotate side to side, 25 or so, 30 or so. Rotation, dozen, two dozen, just like I said, the numbers are not significant. It's the release that you wanna get. So typically it takes a little bit of time but you don't have to be here forever because you want progressive growth. So those, th th those are the patterns. Again, if you have like a yoga block or a thick encyclopedia, you can wedge your, your foot up. You can kind of tilt it back if you want to. Step the other foot forward because you want that hip in relative extension. You want the knee in extension. You want the calf in a lot of dorsiflexion. Fancy words for in the position of where it hurts. Then I start to rotate my body side to side and hips slide towards you and away from you, right? Creating using other movement patterns to create more flexibility in the one that your body is not giving you, but you want. Again, numbers are exactly the same as I said on the cage. All right, again, releasing tension, and then you try the next one. This is the fifth one. Abs, mid-spine, that's the problem. So if the abs don't allow you to get enough extension and kind of tall posture, then your mid-back is not gonna get the very important extension that it needs to walk 
and to go through gait, or essentially running patterns, or any sort of movement patterns of forward motion. So that can bound you down. And then the glute back here, the piriformis says, I need more. So it flexes to get you more motion and it gets pissed off and da da da. So how do you go after the abdominals to create more thoracic spine extension? Again, there's other muscles too, but we'll go after the ab ab abdominals. You're gonna go the, where your rib cage meets your stomach. So the ball is gonna go right underneath, like kind of it's gonna tuck in the rib cage. It's very important that you avoid the very center of your rib cage. There's a, there's a bone there that we don't wanna push on. So don't go very, very center. Go just off to the right, just off to the left, and follow the rib cage down that little diagonal line as it goes in and actually connects into your hip flexor. Funny how those all work together. All right, so I'm gonna put it right on the top of my ribs. I'm gonna kind of try to almost kind of get inside the rib cage. I'm gonna follow that rib line down and just see where the most tenderness is. And once I do, I'm gonna really try to relax and breathe. Why do that? Because it's basically starting to push on your diaphragm, which slows or prevents full breath. So go easy, be appropriate, and follow the same process that I've said before, two to five minutes. Let the muscle sink in, let the ball sink into the muscle, excuse me, and start to break up that connective tissue that's just tight. Awesome. Coming out of there, after you've done both sides, especially important on both sides on this last one, because they work so in conjunction with each, each other, is we're gonna start to start stretch those things, things out. Again, using a cage, there's a lot of ways to do this. And in fact, a lot of the ways we've already done with pushing your foot into the ground and lift your rib cage have already started that process. But if you wanna go arm over head, right? As you go arm over head, it pulls your rib cage, cage up, grabbing onto it at the top of the cage. Again, cage first, and I'll do non-cage second. Plant your back foot. I'm in that same stride stance. Make sure it doesn't, don't go too far back where it hurts your sciatica or your sciatic nerve. And then I'm using my other hand to push myself away. So I've got lateral motion, I got a forward motion, and then watch I spin. Spin right, same side, spin opposite side. As I'm lifting through that rib cage, taking deep breaths into it, you see that full lengthening through that spot. Even looking up, chin up, deep breaths really helps out. Finding your level is very, very important. Again, the side to side and the rotation are probably the most important keys after you've gotten as much extension that your body will actually give you. Again, switching sides, same thing. Whatever hand is up, that foot is back. Key point, grab, slide, push. On the ground, using a door frame, using a wall, I'll use this stick as an example. You can do standing or you can do kneeling, but the key change here is the hand overhead, pulling back the rib cage, getting to great extension, and then I'm gonna basically kinda wanna hang on the mob stick or hang on the door frame, just a little bit of downward pull to open that up as you drive your hips forward. I'm not thinking about my hips so much, I'm thinking about my belly button, drive my belly button forward, because I want that rib, uh, that, that musculature around the abdominals to be focused on more so, as much as possible. Slide left and right, and go rotational. Great way to open up through those abs. Same count. 20 plus or so, dozen two, dozen, you know, minimum 12, and progress through it. Feel it open up. Good time again, pause the video and continue to go, go through that. Another area to focus is gonna be the lateral core. So lateral core and lateral rib cage. A lot of muscles here that though they're on the side will keep you compressed and keep you bent forward because they have diagonal lines to them. The muscles are not vertical, they're diagonal. So when it affects sideways, it also affects forward and back. So laying on, on your side, getting in there, still kind of mid-spine focus, wanna get the spine to extend. So I'm putting the ball, again, right underneath my shirt here, and I'm gonna roll on the forward and back side, and I'll go from my armpit all the way down, down, down to my hip. The whole zone, whole zone. So you can find a lot of areas there that you need to kind of open up and stretch. And the cool part about that drill that we just did, back to the cage, we can add more to it by actually going to the opposite side now. So now I put even more focus on the sideways as we drive our pelvis to the side, our pelvis forward, and then we add in the rotational pieces there to get much more lateral approach. For those at home, right, as you see this now for the second time, mob stick, broomstick, door frame, instead of going on your same side, you put the stick on the opposite side and you thumb down or grab to the side of the door frame, other hand on the same door frame, and you can push into that door frame 
which opens up through. You drive your knee forward if you're kneeling or standing. You rotate, rotate, spin the hips, rotate, spin the hips, or slide the hips to the other side of the door frame or of your area. Again, how far you go, how long you go, you gotta teach the body to go progressively. Very important, the body does not like hot or cold. Now, for these ones, how do we kind of put these all together? So I'm gonna give you kind of a, a, a one size fits all exercise. Again, just as a way to think about it, a strategy, not the only way, to start to train the body into these patterns. So, with any position that we just had, whether we're go, going after the inside thigh, whether we're going after the hip flexor, whether we're going after the quad, whether we're going after the calf, right, in that spot, and you can even put it in the same position that you did, or whether we're going after the abdominals, the lateral core, and the thoracic spine. Doing these arm swings is really gonna help produce movement patterns that are gonna be new patterns to where your body has previously been. So, that's so it's our left side's effective. We're gonna take our arms and we're gonna swing them left and right. So that's gonna be kind of phase one, okay? Do your arm swings left because we wanna create walking momentum through the upper body to start to kind of loosen all these zones, zones up to give them kind of that authentic feel. And the second thing we're gonna do is hands overhead, left and right, or at the very least, hands at chest, arms, core, left and right. If your shoulders don't like going high, boom. Those are the two major uh, patterns of why this thing's happening from the upper body down. It creates the positioning of the lower body and the motion from the upper body to make that happen. So I can do the same thing from a lateral position. I go rotation, and it goes side to side. From the calf position, I put myself in the calf stretch. I do the same thing. I go rot rot rotation, go side to side. With all these motions, your body has to essentially control itself. And that's the, what we're trying to do as an initial stage of your body to manage movement in these stretched out positions. Quad stretch, I can do the same, same thing. It's quad position, rotation, lateral. Then the final piece is I want you to do both at the same time, both rotation and lateral at the same time. So how you do that, one arm does one, one arm does the other. So as an example, stride stance, foot to foot toe in, one hand is rotating, at the same time, the other hand is going sideways and sideways and sideways. This is my rotation hand, this is my lateral hand. They go together. Then I switch what the hands are doing. My left was rotating, now my right's gonna rotate. And I do it at the same time. Boom, left goes over the top, left goes over the top, left goes over the top, boom, okay. Both arms have rotated, but now we're gonna do it at the different time. So now instead of my left arm going, going, going across, my right hand going sideways, I'm gonna complete the same structure on the opposite side. So you have four patterns that you can go through. Just reverse what I just did and do them with every single one of your stretching patterns. I'm gonna, gonna show you two of them. And what I'm giving you is a lot of movements for your body to start to feel that effect of each and every one of them. Now, quick reminder, if these exercises don't work for you, there's probably something deeper going on that needs to be checked out. So again, head to the links in the description below to book a, a consultation call if you wanna go through that, that level, whether you're an athlete, client yourself, or you're a trainer, right? It's gonna be the same educational process. Again, if you're a trainer looking to diet, dive deeper into how this thought process works, we have an amazing problem um, solving exercise mentorship program called the Multidimensional Movement Coaching Mentorship in the description below if you wanna see like, how, does he, how do these guys think? What really makes them come up with these processes? It's all down there in the links below. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos on addressing these types of movement dysfunctions and how to go about them through a process and then end. Cheers, see you next time.